Hello. Welcome to the Creative Differences Podcast. My name is Dallas. And my name is Gabby. And that's it. That that's is all you it. get today. That's all you get. <laughs> yeah. Colin doesn't watch... Scary movies. Scary movies. You have no idea why you're here. Oh, oh yes, you sorry. do. You saw the title. Today, we're talking about It. Chapter one. The first one, but not the first one. Not from the 80s. The one from two years ago. Chapter one. It's a throwback Thursday. Happy Thursday. Demi's not here. She's here, but she's not here. Because As her, always. Yes, exactly. She's lurking in the shadows like Penny West. <laughs> Colin is nowhere to be found. He talked to a strange clown in the storm drain, and we haven't seen him since. <gasps> All right, let's get right into it. <laughs> Gabby. Yes. Do you remember your first time watching this movie? Yes, it was like last year. Cause... Oh, interesting. So you didn't watch it in the theater with us? No, I was not going to go anywhere near it. That's fair. <laughs> and then my boyfriend was like, please watch scary movies with me. And I was like, I will because I love you. <laughs> That's and, love, everybody. Uh, here we are. <laughs> and here you are. So I watched it in the theater. For the first time. Wow. Like the night it came out. Full theater. Audience reactions, everything. Wow. Was great. A full but, theater. Um, yeah. So, you know, the scene with Georgie. He gets his arm chomped off. Yep. And then horribly crawls crying. Yep. That was Into the rainy street. We all went to eat before the movie. And I was like, yo, they're going to have to cut away. Because I know what's going to happen to Georgie. Yep. I was like, they're going to have to cut away. Because if they show it, I might walk out. <laughs> Little like behold, we're like three minutes into the eating. movie. Yeah, and they showed the, everything. And I was like, ah, I'm already here. <laughs> I don't want to leave. But I'm so glad I stayed. So what you're telling me really is movie. that your threats are empty. <laughs> it, it depends. It depends on the situation. But uh, yeah, it's a really good movie. So I'm glad I stayed. Yeah, I had the ability to pull a blanket over my head and hide. So that was the plus nice. to nice. watching it at my boyfriend's house. <laughs> yeah, I was watching it. Last night, and then I would pause it for Colin's sake when he would walk through the room. Oh, that's so sweet. Sometimes, sometimes I just let it run, depending on the scene. Yeah. (laughs) Although the scene where Georgie comes back and it's like, you'll float too, you'll float too. No. I kind of let that run, and I was like, well, it's too late, Colin. You should have said something before you walked through the room. He seemed fine. I hope so. When I I watched it literally like two hours ago. (laughs) You like to come in fresh. I like it. (laughs) Yep. As, as per usual. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really wasn't that scary this time around. Yeah. Mostly because I knew how all, every child was going to be uh, harassed by this monster. <laughs> yeah, when you can see it coming, it's not as... It's not as horrifying. I was watching, I think it was Cinemasins or something, that was like each child gets scared in a similar fashion. Like they're alone mm-hmm. and like there's suspense and mm-hmm. then there's like something horrible that happens. <laughs> yes. And then, um, and then it's over as quickly as it started. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, just keep that in mind, Gabby. They're all going to be scared in the same way. And you're going to know it's coming because the child's alone. Yeah. And <laughs> it made watching it a lot less that makes horrifying. Sense. That makes sense. But I did tell my boyfriend every single time that I didn't like a scene. I was like, oh, I don't like this next scene. And he'd be <laughs> like, that's OK. And just he was watching it with me and he was like basically asleep. <laughs> um, and he'd be <laughs> like, it's OK. And then roll over and go back. to <laughs> Peak boyfriend. Yep. Just, <laughs> it's like, OK. Pat, back to Pat. Sleep. <laughs> but my dog could tell I was having a lot of anxiety and so he mm. parked himself right next to me <laughs> so that was nice dogs are the best mm. so the story I like the story yeah nothing too complex and I read that the main theme was childhood trauma right and each kid has their own various forms of trauma right yeah Bill lost his brother I don't know anyone else's name. Beverly's Beverly. getting abused by her father. Who is the scariest part of this movie? Oh, like truly, because Beverly's that's a father? monster that you know or like that you've seen. And even and it's without real. any like con- like just just the, the like actor you're my and the girl. way he did like ugh. he was way scarier than Pennywise. This poor child. But like yeah. Beverly had that. Not all the kids had a trauma coming in. Some of them were just like, you know what? We need seven kids. Some of you are just going to have to get scared by the clown. <laughs> That's but, um, true. And what's his name? That kid that had, like, his mom had Munchausen's by proxy. And I was like, oh, my didn't. goodness gracious. She was, so she wasn't actually making him sick. She was just telling him he was. That's true. But yeah, it's still like, a similar. Right. Because some people think that she was, like, poisoning him. Oh, okay. No. And she was just giving there. him sugar pills. Yeah, she was giving him placebos and telling him, you're sick. Or the sick, doctor was giving this. him mm-hmm. placebos. She went really far. She, like, she got prescriptions for placebos and everything. She did the whole... Yeah, I think I think the doctors just gave their prescriptions for placebos, yeah. I thought. I don't know. But like but every adult, 99% of the adults in this movie were like just bad. Are trash. But like that usually happens in a children's adventure movie. 
<laughs> not to this extent. <laughs> no, not to this extent. There was like a clown that was using his interdimensional fucked up powers to like yeah, influence like them. Feeding and on the town. Also, as I was watching it, this, the more I was like, oh, this is a boggart. Like, this is a boggart because he's feeding off the fear. He was yeah. like a boggart slash dementor. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, goodness gracious, these poor muggles. Like, because <laughs> <laughs> a lot awesome. of. I was actually wonder like, what do boggards do besides make you scared? I don't know. I guess they do feed they off eat, the fear. Do they attack people? Do they eat them? I don't know. Can I didn't read up. I read that Fantastic Beast and Where to Find the book as yeah. a child, but I read it once as a child years ago. That's fair. And I mostly only remember stuff about Kelpies because <laughs> I thought they were terrifying. <laughs> Kelpies are dope. Newt's Commander, if you're out there, hook, hit us up. Let yep. us know what boggards explain, do. Explain boggards to us. Because, yeah, it goes a little farther than the boggart as in... He will yeah, chomp he you to death. people. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just, oh, the adults are so terrible. Oh, they're really, really Even, bad. like, the pharmacist is, like, oh, yeah. a pedophile. He was, like... Like, hitting she, on Beverly, she, and she's, and like, 13. And she, like, fully knew what kind of a person he was because she immediately yeah. exploited it. Yeah. And I was, like, ooh, girl. Mm-hmm. All the adults in this town. <laughs> Horrifying. <laughs> but also, remember how, in like, I was always a tall girl, Okay. So I like as a child, I was always taller. So people assumed I was much older than how I looked. Ah. Men definitely treated me the same way that they treated Beverly. And I felt like it was very obvious that I was a young child. And mm. my mom was like, no, you're tall as hell. Like they can't tell. And I was like, this is a little creepy. So that pharmacist was also very familiar to me. <laughs> so That means so much more to me <laughs> because for reasons we won't get into on air. I used to call you Joe Bait. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you did all the time. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, Gabby's older than me, so I wasn't being creepy. But Gabby got into some weird situations that I we will not, not discuss. I did not get into weird situations. You sure did. But <laughs> moving on, let's talk about the characters. Let's change the subject <laughs> as fast as we can. So the characters, the kids, they're all great. Very, yes, very good performances, very good actors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Apparently, so I heard a story from Bill Skarsgård that he went after like a kid in like a scene Mm -hmm. and he was like you know with child actors you either get one of two things you get some a child actor that's just naturally good at acting and this might be one of his first gigs or you'll get a kid that's like this is his life like he's been doing this for years and he's a lot more used to being acted at by adults right right so he was like i didn't know what i was dealing with when i was like going after this kid and luckily when i was done he was like wow that was some of the greatest work i've ever seen in my life (laughs) um so that's the kind of acting you're getting with these kids right they're they've been through the the whole acting mill for a while Mm -hmm. they're experienced i mean it shows it's really obvious these these kids grow up with hella technology and they're out here like riding bikes and having casio like (laughs) <laughs> like watches and stuff like like they just lived through the 80s <laughs> yeah and like they're just also good because i noticed this even the first time i watched it but i noticed i remembered it yesterday for the most part each kid gets their own scene where they get to like basically show off how good they are at you, acting yes like you know the kid who plays bill uh jaden martell i want to say his name is yes he gets a bunch of it because he's the like main character he uh-huh. gets a bunch and then yeah. beverly gets the scene in the bathroom yeah she's trying to like explain to her dad what happened and he doesn't see it she's like i was like <gasps> yeah they're, yo they're she's amazing and she's really like a teenager acting. they're all so good they're like all 12 <laughs> <laughs> they're all children also i was watching stranger things and it just i was like wow kids grow up very quickly because finn wolfhard is like almost an adult now mm-hmm. like looking physically i mean he's still very much a child yeah but he was itty bitty when and this Honestly, movie only came out two years ago it made me think that they had to be working on this movie for a while maybe because i was watching a video about shazam yeah, and, and the then kid, oh boy, it looks yeah, way Jack older too. Dylan Grazer, Glazer, yeah, uh huh, something like that. Yeah, like he was like he, a child. His like voice dropped itty-bitty. in between these two movies. Oh my goodness, <laughs> like, he is a tiny child when they're making it. Yeah, and and that was like two years ago. So it just yeah. was. I'm, I was like, yo, what? Happened? I'm like, time, man. <laughs> these like now I understand when parents are like, wow, like you yeah. gotta cherish the moments because these kids grow up fast. And I'm like, holy moly, they do. Like, they geez, so it has been two years, and this child is a teenager, like a full teenager. So. Also, this movie, one of my things that like really bothers me in movies is every movie with high schoolers or middle schoolers, or whatever. All the bullies seem to be like way bigger. No, just complete psychopath oh yeah and that definitely bothered me for this one it was almost unnecessary in my this opinion. one 
ironically, it didn't bother me so much because that's clearly who he's supposed to be. Like Henry Bauer's whole character is he's unhinged and he's like a legitimate dangerous kid. Yeah. My problem is the random bullies like in Power Rangers or something oh, where okay. they're just like, Why are you here? They're just like, you know, stock bully characters, but oh, they okay. want to break kids wrists. And it's like, what is going on here? Fair. But Henry is a future serial killer obviously i mean he's already a killer yeah exactly and then so, they like, like murdered him <laughs> threw him down a well um he i didn't like it because i felt like it was an added stress on top of like a, something already terrifying i mean and yeah. it felt like he was almost scarier than it and i'm like yeah. so what's the point like why are you making this child like truly horrifying mm -hmm. and then now we're also dealing with a creepy clown like pick short one. answer is Stephen King is a messed up person. I mean, yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. and he wrote this about trauma. So, like, I get it. It's supposed to be about childhood trauma. And every kid has their own trauma. And, and he's childhood. just adding to it. Never mind. I'm not going to bring that up. I'm going to bring it up. And then, like, at the end of childhood or, like, what? Yeah, you know, when you have a gangbang with your friends. Okay, that was in the book. It was in this movie. <laughs> yes. But, yeah, I, that's what... So, my little cousin, he's 11. <laughs> he is really into Stephen King. And oh, I no. told his parents, I was, like, sat them down. And I was like, okay, so sometimes these books have very adult themes. He's 11. You need to read the descriptions for these books before you let him read them. Because he was, like... He's the type of kid that was, like, reading Jurassic Park when he was 8. Yeah. I didn't read Jurassic Park until I was 15. Fair. And it was a little hard for me to read it. So, like, he's a little... <laughs> he's a smart little kid. To the point where, like, we went to Romans and he was picking out books. And mm -hmm. the dude was like, this book's above your reading level. And I looked at him and I was, and I was like, it is not above his reading level. <laughs> I was like, he's been reading these types of books for years. And he was like, oh, okay, then let me like let me show you the world like yeah speaking about that scene in that in the book i was like i pulled his mom aside i was like you need to read these descriptions before we let him read these books because i'm telling you that there's some scenes yeah. in these books that he's 11 like he's reading cujo right now i'm mildly proud though because none of my other little cousins I mean, that's cool. came out as much of a bookworm as i was when i feel I was like it's age. one thing like if you're gonna read something scary you know more power to you be scared whatever it's just my problem is with Stephen King writing a child gangbang into his book. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's weird. Like, why is that there? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, when I found that out, I was like, why? I just have some questions. And now, Stephen. and I understand why they left it out. And honestly, it makes of sense. Of course. That they How could you not leave that out? out? <laughs> like, honestly, any director who was like, all right, let's film the gangbang scene. <laughs> no. I'd be like, no. <laughs> no. You need Get to out. go. <laughs> Out. Hang out with Roman Polanski, whatever country yeah, he's hiding go, in. Yeah, go, 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 hide out here. with that fool because yeah. you can't be in this country. Put you in that weird Woody Allen oh, box. Oh, that's wild. It's specifically that scene that I pulled my auntie and uncle side, and I was like, "Y'all need to read these descriptions." And they're like, "Where do we find it?" And I was like, "Literally, just go on Wikipedia." <laughs> yeah, or just you know, don't let them read the book. Um, so we didn't really talk too much about Pennywise. Uh, Bill Skarsgård is a fucked up mess. He is. <laughs> terrifying and, and it's just like this isn't his first foray into horror either interesting he was on a tv show called hemlock grove oh, which heard is about that. also mildly scary right. it's like cw scary but it was okay. on hulu or netflix sci-fi netflix it was netflix? on netflix one of those and it had homegirl that played jean gray famke jansen Sure. Which Jean Grey are you talking about? The from the old, 2000s movies? From the 2000s yes, movies. Yes, that's Famke Jones. Yeah, so Pompey. it had her. She was like one of the headliners. Oh, no, and I Bill like Skarsgård was on that show for six seasons. Yeah, he's so scary. So it's not his first foray into horror, and I don't think it's going to be his last. I think that's his little... He's the Skarsgård that does the horror. I mean... His dad is the Skarsgård that does the MCU, and his brother is the Skarsgård that does the eye candy. Exactly. <laughs> and you know. And then there's... Other scars. There's too many. They're like, don't watch they're like the White Wayne's family. <laughs> yeah. They just keep popping up. Just like, how and many? there's more of them. He has like six or seven kids. Like oh um, Stellan yeah. Skarsgård. Yeah. This, there's going to be more. The White Wayne's. There's so many of them. <laughs> but about the one in this movie, he is frighteningly good at being and, a horrifying clown. And what it is, it's not the way he comes after them. It's like, have you ever seen like a lion getting ready to pounce yeah and how it's just like it's easing itself up and mm -hmm. then it pounces the way he eases himself up before he goes after these kids like you know like when he's talking to georgie and the water's just falling all over his face mm -hmm. and then the eyes are drifting yo oh it's that just... scene 
it took me a while to get through the movie because I was like rewinding <laughs> moments in that scene. Oh, goodness. Like the part where he's talking about the popcorn and he just stops yeah. and stares. And I was, and I was like, like, yo, <gasps> oh, no. Bill Skarsgård, shout out to you it's because I'm terrified and I'm at home. Very well done. He's so good. <laughs> yeah, this oh. is one of those movies I have to watch in the daytime because of that <laughs> scene. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Pennywise himself, he's like, yeah, he's evil, but he's also just, he's kind of a dick. He, yeah. Like, he's really a bully when it comes to the kids like he mocks them a lot yes like he mocks bill stuttering yes when they try to hit him he like mockingly acts like it's hurt like yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then one where he was just like roasting was when <laughs> bill was saying it's not real and he says oh i'm not real i'm not real enough it was real enough for georgie <laughs> i know i was, I was like, like oh no i was like why are you why you sound like you're in a like yo mama contest <laughs> right now for his life like that <laughs> like, the little game crazy. I remember I heard that and I was like, like I clutched my pearls. <laughs> but not in like fear. I was just like, ooh. Like, you, to, you went after you. You didn't have to like, get at him like that. Damn. Pennywise got the clap back. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, Bill Scar's car did an amazing job. And apparently when he auditioned for it, he like started from his car. Mm. to the audition and he dressed up as a clown Ooh. and he was scaring people on the street Don't like and i that. was like you wild wild person Don't like that at all. and then I, like i remembered i was like that's the kind of stuff that act actors <laughs> do and i'm Thespians. like mm -mm. <laughs> he's an actor he'd be acting that yep. boy acting so i want to talk about what's probably my favorite thing about this movie is the visuals yep and it's not just like how it looks but Certain things in the background and scenes here and there. Yes. And like, yo, I have notes for this one. Ooh. Yes. Fancy. I was you just cared. writing down things that I liked. You cared. Yeah, because I like the fewer people there are in our episodes, the more I feel like maybe I should take notes. Because, Aww. you know, if there's like four of us, somebody will say something. Fair. <laughs> okay. So first thing I wrote down is that low growl that Pennywise does when he first shows up. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and it's like. Almost lost in the sound design because, you know, horror movies do that. Thing yeah, I don't like that. I hate it. Because it's unnecessary in this movie. It's unnecessary but continue. in every movie. <laughs> but like, yeah, the first time he shows up in the drain, there's like a low growling sound that he makes. And I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, he's You're like. You're an animal. Yeah, exactly. That's like, like hunting. He's a creature. And I hate it. But also, like his first meeting with a lot of people is great. Because I think my favorite shot in the movie is when he meets Mike. Mike is the black kid. Oh, yes. Yes when like all the arms are coming out of that door and it's like his parents yeah Ugh. which is terrible i don't like that but when he yeah. opens the door and you see pennywise like hanging in, in that chain yeah and he's like in the blue and then he just looks up and waves and his eyes glow yeah i was like yo no put that on a poster because that's an amazing shot oh that was horrifying and then everything gets quiet right before the car shows up I'm yeah like, this is and then you movies. know what i realized while i was watching it about those scenes if mm -hmm. they hadn't gotten interrupted i think pennywise would have taken him and eaten him it's only with like eddie where i felt like he he was letting them live honestly that's one of my things about pennywise and you know 90 percent of horror movie monsters is just like yo if you wanted the kids you could have gotten by now especially with eddie because yeah, with he Eddie, I was him. like, oh, he let Eddie live. But also, it's just like... But, like, all the other kids were interrupted by something. But a lot of times, they're interrupted by kids, like the bullies. Yeah. And then he goes on to just eat the bully anyway. So it's like, if you wanted to, you could just kill him anyway. Yeah, but, like, the bully was alone. And then he was chased down, and yeah. nothing interrupted that. So then he took him. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think he gets the kids when they're alone. Mm-hmm. He scares them first, feeds off yeah. the fear, and Marinates then takes him a little them. Bit. Yeah, exactly. So that's where I was like, I noticed that everybody was interrupted except right. for like Beverly and Eddie. Yeah. Everybody else cool. was like, that I'm Beverly like, scene. peace out of here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had on my head up. Yeah. Oh, my, oh, sorry. Maybe. Mm, no, that's probably still my favorite shot. The library? Yes. The background? The yes. library lady. Oh that's my God, a freaking library lady. Horrifying. To me, not if we told you about the lady in the library. Okay, because I've told everyone it. about it. Because yeah, you did. And you told us about that. And then I watched the movie for, for the first mm -hmm. time. And I was like, oh, my God, no. The first time I saw it, I don't think I remember it, but I heard about it mm -hmm. after I saw it for the first time. And then I went back in. I was at work and I just walked into an it showing because I, like, I got to check it out. And I was like, hey, it's a library scene. And it is so creepy. It's very Just the creepy. way the lady. Huh. So but for those great. who haven't really seen this movie. When Ben is in the library by himself reading up on dairy, there's a 
lady in the background as he's starting to flip through the book that just stops and looks up and just stares at the camera. But she's in the background blurred Mm -hmm. and she just stares until the red balloon comes by. Well, no, because they cut to and from. So they go to her. She like turns, looks at the camera, leans forward a bit. They cut to back to the book, cut back to her and she's closer. And then they cut back to the book. Yeah, they do this three times. And then Mm -hmm. the last time she's even closer. Oh my god! And then the next time they show her, she's like back to where she was before putting the books away. Oh my god! So it's one of those things that like it doesn't pay off into. Yeah, it's just one of those. If you're paying attention, it's that much better. But you might not even notice it. Once you notice it, it adds a huge amount of tension to the scene because you're like, there is something that's not Mm -hmm. right here. What's she gonna do? Is she gonna eat this boy? Or like, is she Pennywise? Like, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> also, the librarian was mean. Like, she, she was came mean. Up to bed and she but was I like, think, "Go outside and play with your friends." What well, are you doing? No, here? I think what it was was because all the adults are low key possessed by Pennywise. Yeah, they it's just... Pennywise realizing that this kid's gonna figure it out. That mm. like this is something that's been happening mm-hmm. because it's a history book on dairy and it's gonna show him yeah. like that this happens at a very frequent interval at a certain interval, mm-hmm. right? So if he knows that, then he'll probably eventually be able to figure out how to defeat this clown right Right. so or he'll be able to tell other people about it sure so i think that's what it was that's the vibe i got that why she was so mean because it was like i'm giving you a history book and this history book's gonna like definitely point the finger at pennywise that's fair maybe she's just possessed and that too yeah so also like it's kind of counterintuitive as a librarian to be like shouldn't you be outside exactly like libraries are dying lady let the kid read the book they're actually not dying anymore. oh good it's because we're so poor it's because people oh, are like good. our age are poor so we want to read so we go to the library oh that's bittersweet libraries are no longer dying shout out to poverty <laughs> <laughs> keeping the books alive i don't know yeah so they're no longer uh, they're no longer dying. before we move on <laughs> the last little background thing i want to talk about yeah. is that show that's on all the tvs so every oh, time that creepy lady that's like tells people what to do. Yes. So she's like, you can play in the sewers. Henry kills his dad or whatever uh-huh. that show it's playing through every scene where one of the adults is like not paying attention to the TV. Uh-huh. It's like a kid's show. Mm-hmm. And the first time Eddie's mom is watching it and you can't really tell what she's saying. Yeah. But then it's playing again in Beverly's house when the dad is like asleep or not in the room or something like that. Uh-huh. And it's saying like, you know, Playing Head on sewers. down to the sewers. Da, yeah. da, 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 da. In the sewers, you can be as happy as a clown. But when she says clown, it like distorts in this really creepy way. Yep. Mm-hmm. But another thing that I didn't notice until yesterday is when Beverly's dad goes back into the room, mm-hmm. the TV switches back to baseball. So oh, like, yeah, no, there's like an extra little added layer <laughs> no. because he talks to her and then he's walking. He's about to turn back into the room and they're like, Wade Boggs, home run, blah, 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 blah. And I'm no. like, oh, my God, it's even creepier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> no why'd you make it worse <laughs> but i was like yo because there's so many scenes there's where that, these little details it's such a good movie this is something that they sat around and thought mm-hmm. and talked about and actively placed there yeah it's not just a happenstance so i feel like it'd be fun fun to do but oh it's so creepy i don't like it i don't like it do you have a favorite aspect of this film yeah like, I've talked about this before. I like movies that are predominantly children cast okay. because we grew up with that and it was gone for a while. Right. So that's what I like about the movie. I like this cast. It's very, very good. And the way they work together, I buy it. Mm-hmm. I just also think it's really cool that these kids that are like grew up with a lot of technology are able to convincingly play kids that did not grow up with anything like that. Right. <laughs> and it's it, I think it's an interesting dichotomy. Um, I like that dichotomy it's a good word um it's a good juxtaposition (laughs) um i also like it just feeds into nostalgia and like you know the these kids as parents probably grew up in the 80s Mm -hmm. so you know it's funny to see their own children like basically playing their life (laughs) that'd be pretty dope that's what i like i feel it and i like that it's it's a thing that's coming back Mm -hmm. also like i don't have any particular attachment to like if the movie is driven by kids but i'd like this group of kids because yeah. they're so good yeah they're really really so talented. like i really like that and all that stuff i was just raving about all the little background things because that's the kind of stuff that makes you appreciate a horror movie more and it also is something that you catch the second time around yeah like when i'm i'm not too busy being scared mm-hmm. I, it's stuff that i catch and then it makes it scary all over again <laughs> yeah i love any movie where i can watch some watch it again and see different things and not yeah. just like easter eggs because you know yeah 
There's we, plenty of those yeah, in this too. Apparently. We get lots of Easter eggs and lots of different things. But like stuff like different shots, like the library lady yeah. and the TV show and how mm-hmm. horrifying it is. Yep. Stuff like that. That's all my favorite. Andy Muschietti. I think I said that with enough flair. <laughs> I did a hand movement. You guys couldn't see it. He's great. I've never seen him do anything what is, before this movie. What is he? Is he the cinematographer? The or the oh okay. Yeah. And, you know, now he's going to make The Flash, or he won't. We'll see what happens. It's not important. <laughs> oh, The Flash. I hope he does. I'm pulling for you, The Andy, Flash movie. come on, bro. But also, you made the second chapter, like, two hours and 40-something minutes. So, you know, I just want to talk about that real quick. But, you know, we'll you get You know to what? <laughs> I think because of the Avengers movie, they're all like, we can do this now. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> Endgame is three hours and two minutes. <laughs> like, Why not drop Midsummer you, twice and make it longer? And you know what? I'm about to see it. <laughs> Oh, no, also, like, like, I'm gonna fully watch understand why they made it so long because they're going to do flashbacks. Yeah. And there's two, you're working with two casts of seven people. So I understand why you would need a little bit more time. Right. That being said, <laughs> it's almost three hours. It's like, oh man, it's going to be a ride. So what are you expecting from it, chapter two? Um, Besides being really freaking long. I'm expecting to be impressed by the older cast, obviously. Right. Um, I think the best casting now that I've seen it again, is Bill Hader as Richie. That's a great. That yeah. is so good. They did a really good job with this casting. Like, ugh, so well done. But that one in particular, especially like when I was watching, I put pay extra attention to Ricky, Richie this time because I was like, how am I, am I going to see Bill Hader in this? And then mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very clearly. Definitely. Especially, he goes into a British accent at one point, which oh, yeah. is also something Bill Hader's done with his own comedy. Oh, nice. Which I think is, like, fantastic. It was such a ridiculous British accent. Oh, it is. Pip, pip. Tally ho. <laughs> yep. Like, and while they're dressing a wound, mm-hmm. and I'm like, of all the times. Oh, children are fucked up. I love Richie. Um, But, uh, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the cast. I like James McAvoy a lot. And he and... Um, her name why am i jessica chastain? jessica chastain like this is their fifth movie together i think really? or something or fourth yeah they did her and him slash him which is also called the disappearance of eleanor rigby okay oh no it's their third movie together sorry him slash her slash the disappearance of eleanor rigby <laughs> is like three movies so i kind of count them okay. as three movies even though they were shot all at the same time Getting confusing <laughs> they were also in the new x-men movie Dark oh, Phoenix, right. yeah. and now they're in uh, this. So nice. those two really know each other really well, uh, and I like watching them on screen together. Who else? Isaiah Mustafa. Mm-hmm. I love him. <laughs> just from those, what is it, Old Spice those commercials? commercials. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just looking forward to seeing a different side of him, because I know he's been in other things, but I really only know him from like, look at your man, now look <laughs> at me. <laughs> look back to me, now look him, back to me. I'm on a horse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, excited, it's going to be fun. Yes. It's going to be a fun time. And so I, f- I feel like it's going to be a strong movie. I'm really glad that they're going to be doing flashbacks with the kids because mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that cast. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that we're not completely forgetting about them. We're going we're gonna to do both. I feel like it'll make me accept the older people more, if that makes sense. I feel it. Because I don't like change as any, uh, any human in an audience. <laughs> All right. That's a, that's a take. <laughs> so... so. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to all that same stuff. Yeah. Bill Hader, Jessica Chastain, James McAvoy, who I've decided is the greatest actor of our generation. After I mean, after Split, Split I, I need to see Glass. Split, he's but so I'm not freaking good. ready. Oh man, he's great. But yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be long. Mm. He's really talented. Fun time. fun time, fun time. Clowns. Yeah. I've liked James McAvoy since I saw him in Starter for 10, which apparently was one of his first movies like ever. Starter for what? Starter for 10. I don't even know what that is. It's an English movie that, that has, sense. I think, Alice even it oh i like her and then it also has homegirl from the prestige i don't know her name but it's the three of them and he's basically um so he's basically like a poor college student okay. and like his family's poor right and he becomes part of this uh like tv show decathlon type thing mm-hmm. quiz show and it's about that oh and benedict cumberbatch is also in it like and he plays like a really, really nerdy, like dude that super cares about this quiz show that they're doing. Nice. And uh, James McAvoy is just very charming in it. All right. But yeah, that was a roundabout way to finish this I'm episode. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we can cut it out. <laughs> we'll see. Twins of Demi feels like cutting it out. Speaking of the people who help us, shout out to Crown Digital, Brandon Yay! and Io. You put us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, which is where you're probably listening to this. 
unless it's on YouTube. In which case, subscribe, like, share, do all the YouTube things, do all the Spotify things, yes. do all the Facebook things. That's enough things. Gabby, where can they find you on the medias? They can find me on Instagram at Stegosoria. Dope. Soria is spelled S-O-R-I-A. I like it. You can find me on Twitter at a king named Simba. You can find Colin at a clown named Pennywise. <laughs> and you can find us as a team at y'all underscore different. Yeah. Creative differences is too long. We can't and make y'all it different is still taken. Every day it's taken. It will never not be taken. I don't know who has it. You can also find us on Tumblr at Creative Differences Podcast. Find us on Facebook. Do the search thing. It's a lot of things. Thanks for tuning in. It's been different. Stay away from gutters and clowns. And yeah, stuff. don't don't talk to Bill Skarsgård. Don't do it. <laughs>